Hi, my name is Tori Norman, and I'm a construction industry technology specialist for Squire & Company. If you are using QuickBooks as a contractor and you're looking for a billing solution that's similar to the AIA invoicing format, no doubt you've been a little frustrated with, with, with what QuickBooks has to offer. Thankfully, there are some other solutions out there in the market that connect with QuickBooks. One such solution is Quantum Project Manager, and today I'm going to be introducing you to the billing features within the Quantum Project Manager solution. So just a quick briefing on the environment we'll be using today. We will be on a Windows 7 machine running QuickBooks Premier 2015 Contractors Edition. However, what we're going to be doing today will work with both Enterprise and Pro as well. Now, before I jump into Quantum, I want to show you just briefly what your typical invoice looks like out of QuickBooks so that we can contrast that with what we'll be learning today out of Quantum and give you a feel for just what's available to you as a contractor. So what you're looking at right here is a typical invoice in QuickBooks Desktop Edition. As you can see, there isn't a lot of features that a typical contractor is going to want to see, such as the amount that was billed last time, the amount that's, in, that's billed in the invoice right now, and what is still remaining to be billed, kind of a percentage complete. Those are very foundational principles for billing in the contractor world, and stock that's not available in most of your QuickBooks editions. So that's where Qu Quantum is going to come in. So let's go jump into Quantum and we'll learn a little bit more about how to connect Quantum to QuickBooks and what the billing can look like. So this is Quantum Project Manager. As you can see, it is a Microsoft Access-based program, but you do not have to have a full version of Access on your computer to run it. It does install with a runtime if you don't have um, your own copy of Access. So you don't have to worry about that. Also, Quantum Project Manager is a broad suite of many different tools that are available to the construction industry. Today we're just going to be focusing on the billing section of that though, so there will be many menu options that we're not going to play with. Uh, before we can get started though, we want to make sure that Quantum is connected to our QuickBooks file. So let's go ahead and do that first. Um, you can find it here in the Preference section, and under the Company Info tab, QuickBooks Settings. I can browse out and I need to find the QuickBooks file I'm using. In this case I'm using the sample contractor based business. So we're going to open that up. So now that we've chosen the QuickBooks file we're going to be using, we need to test the connection between QuickBooks and Quantum so that we have a chance to grant Quantum the access rights to the QuickBooks file that we need. So let's say test the connection and it found the QuickBooks file and QuickBooks wants to know how we want to interact with the Quantum Project Manager. So down here I'm going to say yes, always connect even if QuickBooks is not running. I'm going to have it, allow it to grant rights to personal data so that it just has access to everything that it might need and say done. Now QuickBooks is connected to Quantum and that's all there is to it. But there is still one step left before we get started using Quantum and that's adding our information from QuickBooks into Quantum for the billing. Now there's really only two things that we need to add from QuickBooks to Quantum. First of which is the customer. So let's go ahead and add those. You'll find the customers and vendors and everybody all kind of lumped together under the company section. So where in QuickBooks they call them names, in Quantum they call them companies. Now just to speed up today's presentation, I've already linked our companies from QuickBooks to Quantum, so I won't need to do that again. But just to show you where you would go in to do that, I go in and add new company. And then once I get to the add new company section, you'll see import customers from QuickBooks. And when I click on that, it will walk me through the whole process of adding cu customers to QuickBooks. Depending on how long your list is, it should only take a few seconds to a minute or two to get your entire list in. It's, it's a fairly fast process. You can also import vendors. However, for the billing section, if that's all you're using this for, that really isn't necessary. So for today's presentation, we're not going to do that. So the last thing that we want to add are our items from our invoices so that we can do our billings. But we don't want to do that just yet. We'll do that inside of the project section. So let's jump into there. Project is really home for everything billing related for what we're going to be doing today. So inside of our projects we have to start a new project which is like a new job inside of QuickBooks. So here um, I've created a project for, for the customer uh, Heather Campbell called House New Construction. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that one. And here are all of the different tools that we have available to us inside of Project Manager. 
Now this is the full version of Project Manager, so all of these are unlocked, but you can buy them modular based, piece by piece. You can buy just the billing if you want to. So let's go to the billing section, which is really where we're focusing today. Step one for the billings is just reviewing the information on this main screen. These are going to be the headers for your invoices and documentation. So you want to make sure that these are correct. Um, you've got your to section with your customer's information, your from section with your company's information, and then you can also have the architect and some of the other features that are standard in the AIA formats. Once that's finished, your next step is going to be setting up your schedule of values. Schedule of values is a grid, looks kind of like this. Um, the total check mark is if you wanted to, to do a subtotal. Um, the BRK is if you wanted to have a page break after a certain line. Um, that just helps you kind of organize and group things. I'm going to keep it fairly simple today. We're just going to have a list of the different types of um, services that we're going to be providing in this project. So I've set up my descriptions, my line items. Um, you can have these pre-fill for you, which is what I did, or you can actually custom set your different line numbers in there depending on what you want them to be. If you have subsections like a 1.1, 1.2, things like that, you can do that. Um, I just had mine go down the list. And then over here we need to say what our QuickBooks items are. And that's where we need to sync in with QuickBooks. So I can hit this refresh QuickBooks button and this is going to refresh my QuickBooks item list and that's really all there is to it. It takes just a few seconds to do and then you should be able to get drop downs for each of uh, your items right here and you will need to manually sync which QuickBooks items correspond to which line items so that when the invoice gets imported back into QuickBooks the information will come in correctly. Uh, once your schedule of values is set up, back up here, you're ready to start creating your payment applications. And this is really where the strong point of, Quick, of uh, Quantum Project Manager lies. So let's go into the payment applications section. And as you can see, I've already got a couple of payment applications created for this particular project. So let's create a new one. So we're going to create a new application. It wants to just confirm what the total amount of the previous applications were. Typically speaking, you should take the default on this because it should already be in Quantum, but in the event you have a new project that's part way done when you start using Quantum, you can fill that information in here. I'm going to take the default because it pulled those from the last two payments. And as soon as I do that, it automatically pulls in my schedule of values. It automatically identifies everything that's been previously paid. And now it's asking me what we're paying in this application. So let's say we're paying all of this one, all of this one, and maybe half of this one, and only 2,000 of this one. That's how much we've completed, and that's what we're going to be billing in this particular application. So now I can come in and print my application. And true to the AIA format, you've got your payment application cover screen, as well as the detail behind it, and you can print each of those. So let's pull up the payment application and see what it looks like. And as you can see, this is the AIA format payment application. And then if you wanted to go back, we can look at the continuation pages and you get all of that detail that uh, most contractors are looking for. We've got our schedule amount, our original amount on the schedule. We've got any previous payments, the amounts that are going to be for this period, our percentage complete, and the balance to completion. So this should give you everything that you need to create professional invoices. However, it's still not inside of QuickBooks. So after we're finished printing, when we're finished with all of that, we'll want to post it back to QuickBooks. Posting it back to QuickBooks is uh, almost a click of a button. All right, so you can enter in retainage if you want. Um, we'll definitely want to enter in the invoice number. And there's not going to be any retainage on this one today. Um, be sure to add what your amount completed item is going to look like, what your retainage code item is going to look like. And then once you're finished setting all of this up, you can post it back to QuickBooks. It's going to ask you to confirm that you want to do this. We'll say yes. And the invoice is in there. So let's take a look at what that did in QuickBooks. So if I come into Heather Campbell, you can see down here at the bottom, I've got invoice 9999. And there are my amounts and the items that I've specified that they're supposed to go in. So as you can see, the invoice inside of QuickBooks uses the same items that are found in the schedule of values. 
Same amounts, same lines, essentially it's the same invoice as what's in Quantum. It's just that Quantum allows you to store more information than what you can typically get out of QuickBooks for the construction industry. So, if you want a more professional look, you want the traditional AIA invoice and more detail to your customer, then perhaps you should take a look at Quantum. If you want to learn more about Quantum or other tools that are available for the construction industry, I encourage you to contact Squire's Construction Industry Technology Specialists at 801-225-6900 or via email quickbooks at squire.com or by visiting our webpage www.quickbooksadvantage.com.